Today on Revive Our Hearts, Barbara Rainey offers hope to parents of prodigals. God knows what you're going through better than any human. He knows how you feel. He knows what the stakes are. And He wants to be your friend to walk through this with you. Welcome to the Revive Our Hearts podcast with Nancy Damas Walgamuth, author of Lies Women Believe. For June 2nd, 2023, I'm Dana Gresh. I don't know if you're aware of this, but June 2nd is the worldwide day of prayer for the prodigal. Now, I'm sure you can think of someone who, right now, is far from the Lord. Someone who's gone his or her own way. It may be your own son or daughter or a grandchild, maybe just a friend. They're on a path toward destruction, and it just feels like there's nothing you can do about it. Well, there is something you can do, friend. We're going to consider that today as we hear from a variety of voices, including Barbara Rainey later in this program. But now let me take you back. Some months ago, Nancy was recording a series teaching her way through Psalm 136. As a refresher, here are the opening verses. Give thanks to the God of gods, for His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His steadfast love endures forever. It's a wonderful psalm with that repeated refrain about how the steadfast love of God is forever. To Him who by understanding made the heavens, for His steadfast love endures forever. Incidentally, you can listen to the whole series on Psalm 136. It's called His Love is Forever, and we've linked to it in the transcript of today's program at reviveourhearts.com. It just so happened that in our studio audience for that series, there were some women who understand the pain of either having or being a prodigal. They found comfort in being reminded of the steadfast love of the Lord. At the end of the recording session, women in the audience were passing the microphone around and sharing things that they had learned, ways that God had spoken to them through His Word. We'll hear from them in a moment, but I think you'll see why we wanted to play this for you today, on the Day of Prayer for the Prodigal. Here's Nancy to start us off. In recent days, I've spent quite a bit of time, some on the phone and a lot in texting, with a friend, a close friend, who has a prodigal child. child is making, and it's years leading up to this, is making a lot of really bad choices and totally oblivious and unaware, still manipulating, playing the family. And I, I have... A lot of friends who've been through this, many still going through it, but this one's just been very fresh to me. And while I've been having that ongoing exchange with this mom who will get a text from her child and will text, copy it to me, say, what should I say now? What do I do now? Well, I'm not a mother. I'm, I've not been there, but this friend knows I care. But I've been having that going on on my phone, on my lap, while I've got my Bible and Laptop opened to Psalm 136. And this truth from God's Word that I'm counseling my own heart with has given me a resource to inform the way that I encourage this friend. Now, the first thing out of my mouth isn't, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. That wouldn't be compassionate. I listen. I care, just like Jesus does. Well, I don't do it just like He does, but that's the model for us, right? I ask questions, I listen some more, I pray with and for. But when it comes down to it, the, the most helpful thing I can do for that precious friend, I can't change their child. They can't change their child. I can't change their child's heart. Only God can do that. But I can reassure this mom and the dad and the siblings in this family that God is worthy of our praise and that He is good all the time, and all the time He is good, and His steadfast love endures forever. And I can assure those parents that God knows where that child is. God knows what that child is doing right now. The decisions that are going to have lifelong, potentially bad implications, self-destructing, damaging, dangerous. But I can say to those parents, God loves your child more than you could even love this child, which is a whole lot. And God is good, and God is doing good. 
and God is doing good in this situation, and God is at work in ways that you may have no idea of to show this child his power, his greatness, his goodness, his steadfast love, his judgment, his discipline. God may take that child through 38 years of a wilderness, and you say, as a parent, I couldn't bear that. Well, that child's wilderness becomes a wilderness for you, right? And what does God do in the wilderness? He leads his people. He loves them. He cares for them. He protects them. He meets their needs. God doesn't forsake them even though they're in the wilderness because of their own stupidity and rebellion and sin. God still loves them. And God still loves these parents. And God still loves this child wandering as they are in this vast, howling wasteland of a wilderness. And in the midst of that desert, that wilderness, God is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And we can give thanks. Before we see the outcome, I've had to say to these parents, you have to be in this for the long haul. And you have to make some tough decisions. Loving this child as God loves this child doesn't mean that you enable them to keep committing things that are dangerous and illegal. It doesn't mean that you provide for them in a way that they don't feel the consequences of their own choices. They need to feel those consequences. These parents are having to make some very hard decisions. It's breaking their hearts, the whole family. But they're trusting in the steadfast love of the Lord, in the goodness of the Lord. And God is giving them, one day at a time, the ability to pray good for their child, to pray for the love of God, to reach that child's heart. I say that because maybe you're facing a situation that just seems so impossible, and it's not you, it's somebody that you love. You can trust God not only to write your story, to borrow from the title of a, a book <laughs> that Robert and I wrote, you can trust God to write your story, but you can also trust God to write the story for those you love. And that's what these parents are doing right now. That's what some of you are doing right now. And in the midst of it all, Sometimes when you're crying your eyes out, you can't sleep at night. Some of you younger kids, I love you young women, but I'm telling you till you have had kids of your own and watched them go through it. It's just, we don't get it. I've never had children of my own and I watch these friends going through this, but I'm telling you what a parent goes through with a child. But we all go through things with people we love, with people we know. And the temptation is, to worry, to stress, to become anxious, to manipulate, to try and fix it, to try and solve it. That doesn't mean there are, you know, there are things we need to do. There are steps that we need to take. But the heart has to be what Jesus said. Why are you anxious? Why are you worried? If I care for those birds, if I feed those birds and clothe those flowers that are out in the field and then the wind blows and they're gone, but I gave them clothing, do you not think I will care for you? and for the ones that you love. That's our host, Nancy demoss Walgamuth. What followed was a time of sharing. We'll start with Mary Ellen, who had been impressed by a video Nancy showed about the planets, our sun, and other stars. The video points out how small Earth is compared to the sun and much larger stars. The planets and how tiny Earth was with that uh, red star... Very often I look out into outer space and just try to picture how magnificent our Creator is and how little I am. But I have to confess to Him who alone does great wonders. I have spent way too much time trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do to fix my prodigal. And uh, knowing that He loves her, I love that you added that because I have told myself he loves her and my grandchildren more than I do. And he's with them, even though I can't be. But uh, it's, him, it's him alone. So I guess I just want to thank you. I've had so many things go through my mind today and so many examples of his love. You've helped me remember all the times and the other hard things he has walked me through, that he is faithful and his love does endure. But I especially want to thank you for the planets because I am so small. And it keeps reminding me of that. So thank you. So small and yet 
he cares for us. He loves us. He knows where we are. But recently I gave him four suggestions. (laughs) To God? Yes. On what would be a really good way to redeem the situation. And by the fourth one, I was driving my car and I sat there thinking, you probably won't use any of them. (laughs) But just in case you're wondering... So to him alone, he's the one who does great wonders. And I do believe he is doing exceedingly abundantly above more than I could even imagine. So I'm trying to stop the suggestions. (laughs) Courtney, you're one of the moms. Yes. So my name is Courtney Ward. And um, I was listening to you speak. And it is always hard to hear about prodigals because I was one. And it's hard to be on that side of it because I was so hard-hearted, breaking my parents' heart, you know. And today when you're talking about remembrance, and I was thinking the remembrance doesn't have to be for guilt and shame, but it's really to recall to mind what God has done. Because my heart was hard and sinful, and yet... His steadfast love endures forever. And through that, you know, when I do look back on that time of rebellion, I see very specific things where he protected me and he guided me. And we don't think about that because we think, okay, we're against God. We are running in the opposite direction, but we can't, you know, we can't run. But yet I I do, I, I realize that and I look back and I just see, and it wasn't until he really took the blinders off. He, I mean, he took them off. And I was standing there, I remember the day, and I was like, I cannot believe where I am. I cannot believe I'm in this. But he's also been faithful in guiding me back. So be encouraged that he does a a wonderful work. How old were you when that moment came? I was 19. And had been running for four years. years. I left home when I was 15. And um, Were your parents believers? They were. Were they praying? Yes. Did they have to make some tough choices? They did, very tough choices. Yeah. Yeah, and and some of it still continued a little bit. And um, I mean, the process was long to come out of that because, you know, your mind is full of lies. And he takes the blinders off. You know, my husband bought a place once that needed a lot, a, a house for that was in foreclosure. And it was just terrible in the inside. And um, actually, he didn't bring me to it. My kids were working on it. We have six kids. So he was working through it. And one of my older um, boys came back and he said, you know, mom, when God deals with us and he's working in our hearts, it's kind of like that. It takes a long time. (laughs) You know, all the repainting and redoing carpets. And, you know, we want an instantaneous fix, but it's some, you know, it takes a long time to go through and redo that. And that really spoke to my heart too of, you know, that, that, that process can be a while. Well, the thought that God opened your eyes and renewed your mind and gave you a new heart. And then I see your precious Rachel sitting next to you. Yeah, he does wonderful work. Who is a whole new generation Mm -hmm. and a whole new family line how amazing is the goodness of God Very amazing. and the steadfast love yes. of the Lord. I hope this gives some of you mamas some hope. Yeah. It should. Grandmoms, and um, to know you don't often hear a story from, you hear from the parents of the prodigals, but you don't often hear from the one who was the prodigal. Right. I want my friend that I've been walking through this with to hear yeah. your story and to be encouraged. God's at work. Because you come back and there's that shame. You know, one thing that I learned was um, because I wasn't sure how to go about, because you hear the prodigal, you know, the story of the prodigal. He comes home, he gets hugged, and that's the end of it. And it wasn't until... It probably really wasn't totally right. the end, right? <laughs> no, it it's wasn't. A it wasn't. A- absolutely. But, you know, um, somebody pointed out Matthew. Matthew, he was a tax collector. He was a covenant child, you know? He grew up knowing his faith, and yet he became a tax collector. That was not what people who were Jewish did. You know, that was turning his eyes away from, from God, from his faith. And yet after that, look at what he did. He became a follower of Christ. That was very hopeful to me because um, 
just to see his life after that, that there is this godly man, you know. It's a redeeming God. He He's is making redeeming. all things new, yes. right? Yes. So we think of the goodness of God, giving thanks, the goodness of God, the steadfast love of the Lord in situations that are clean and neat and put together. But there's so much messiness Mm -hmm. in this world. That's what sin has done to our world. And it makes all our lives messed up, whether it's visible in external ways or just heart issues. So here, Melissa's in a home that's dealing, helping women with substance abuse and addictions and whatever. So those kinds of things are kind of obvious when God rescues you from that or from the life of a prodigal. But there's not a woman here in this room who hasn't experienced the messiness of their own heart. And it may be the older brother of the prodigal, the self-righteous, pharisaical brother who needed as much redemption and being made new as did that prodigal, right? Because his heart was away from home, was away from the father, and he was stuck on himself. And we don't know where he ended up, but we know that the grace of God is available to every person who sees their messiness, their need, and says, Lord, I need your goodness. I need your steadfast love in my life. There's nobody who doesn't need it. Yeah. Thank you, Courtney. It's so good to remember not only that God is in charge, but that He has a plan for the prodigal you love and something for you to learn in the process. We've been listening to a sharing time from women who attended a recording session tied to Nancy's series titled His Love is Forever, based on Psalm 136. We're talking about how parents of prodigals can have hope. Barbara Rainey explains one way she found hope in God's Word at a difficult time when one of her children was making poor choices. This is an excerpt from a question and answer episode of the Barbara Rainey podcast from Ever Thine Home. Barbara's husband, Dennis, joined her. Rebecca's got a thorny question. She has a 28-year-old daughter who is living with a 31-year-old man who is not a believer. And uh, she knows where this is headed. Looks like it's headed toward marriage. And that can be a lifetime of hurts and sorrow and anguish for her daughter. What would you say to her? Well, first of all, I would say I really understand how you feel. I know that is scary. It's frightening. It's sobering. It's hard to watch because we as moms invest our lives in our kids, and we pray for them, and we are at, we ask God all the time that God would provide a godly husband or a godly wife, we pray that God would order their steps. And when we see something like this happening, it's hard not to feel like a failure. It's just hard to know how to process it, and it's hard to know what to do. And usually in these situations, a daughter like this is probably not going to be very teachable. She's probably not going to respond well to comments that you might have or thoughts that you might have. Um, because she's pretty much already made up her mind or she wouldn't be living with him as it is. Again, I wish we could sit down and have coffee because I'm sure there's more to the story that would help me give you maybe more specific advice or more detailed advice. One thing that I do want to encourage you to do, um, there have been a couple of seasons in my life and in our marriage that have been really challenging and difficult. One of those seasons was not too long ago in the last five years. And one of the things that I did that made all the difference in the world for me as I went through that hard season, and you're in the middle of a really hard season right now, is that I I read through the Psalms every day, sometimes two or three Psalms a day, from a particular version of the Psalms called the Psalter, and it's published by Crossway Publishers. And what made this version so helpful to me was that at the end of every Psalm, was a devotional commentary written by Dane Ortland, And his words were so good for my soul. And so I worked my way through that that book two or three times in that season. And what it did every day for me is it helped me not only identify my feelings, it helped me pour out my soul and my heartache to the Lord, Mm -hmm. but it also helped write my thinking. It also helped turn me back to... God knows what He's doing. God's in control. God can work all things together for good. And it was just a way of reorienting my thinking, my prayers, 
just the way I looked at what was going on. So I want to really encourage you and anyone else who's listening, who's walking through a really hard season, to read through the Psalms, um, because I think you need a companion who understands rejection, who understands the heartache Mm -hmm. of a prodigal child. And Jesus understands that. God is the perfect parent, and He doesn't have a single child who wasn't a prodigal. He doesn't have a single child who hasn't made some really life-altering mistakes. And so He knows what it feels like. God knows what you're going through better than any human. He knows how you feel. He knows what the stakes are. And He wants to be your friend to walk through this with you. So I want to encourage you to to do that, to, to read through the Psalms and find Him as your best companion in going through this journey. When you talk about soul care, there was one other thing that you did that I thought was really wise. Just comment on the Parents of Prodigals group that you formed. Oh, that I formed, yeah. When uh, one of ours was going through a really hard season that that affected us much like I know this is affecting you, the circumstances were different than this, but um, I decided that I needed to surround myself with other parents, other moms in particular, who knew what this felt like, because a lot of the parents of our other kids in school just didn't have any way of relating to that. And there's there's something about going through a really hard time with a child that makes you feel so isolated and so alone. And, it, and when we don't know someone else, it, it really can be an isolating experience. But for me, I knew of a couple of other families in our church who also had kids who were struggling. And so I called those moms and I said, hey, can we get together? Can we talk about our kids together? And let's pray for our kids. Let's form a little prayer group. So I did that. And there were three or four of us. There weren't many. But it was so good for me to talk to other moms who were experiencing the same thing. I didn't feel crazy. I didn't feel as alone. I didn't feel as abandoned. And we supported each other. We prayed for each other. We encouraged one another. And it was a great help. So I would ask God to help you find someone else, at least one other mom, who can identify with where you are and can understand where you are and the two of you can begin praying for your kids together and see what God does. I think there's a lot of parents who suffer quietly. A lot of parents. Who are alone. And what you did was you didn't withdraw. You sought out some other women, other moms, who would provide godly counsel for you uh, and some that you could also give godly counsel back to them. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. Yeah. That's a short segment from the Barbara Rainey podcast from Ever Thine Home. Thank you, Dennis and Barbara, for sharing that with us here on Revive Our Hearts. God's Word is powerful, isn't it? It always brings perspective and comfort in times of difficulty. And that's something parents of prodigals need to remember. Now, even though the ESV devotional Psalter that Barbara mentioned is out of print now, the same content is still available from Crossway digitally. And we've linked to that in the transcript of this program at reviveourhearts.com. Now, once you're in the transcript, look where you see additional resources. That's where you'll find the link. And of course, you know what you really need is your own copy of the Bible. So don't forget that. You can find comfort as you read through the Psalms and pour your heart out to God by just reading your own Bible. There's one more resource I want to mention, though. It's the 90-day devotional by Judy Douglas titled, When You Love a Prodigal. Judy is the original organizer of the Worldwide Day of Prayer for the Prodigal going on today, and she understands the difficulties parents of prodigals experience. She was the parent of a prodigal for many years. We'll send you a copy of Judy's book as our way to say thank you for your donation of any amount to support Revive Our Hearts. You can contact us with your gift at our website, reviveourhearts.com. And when you make a donation, you'll be able to indicate you'd like the book by Judy Douglas, or you can simply request it when you call with your donation. Our number is 1-800-569-5959. That's 1-800-569-5959. Five, nine. Can I ask you to do me a favor? Would you spend some time today praying for the prodigal or prodigals you love, and maybe for prodigals you don't even know? 
Yes, there's no greater gift that we can give prodigals, whether they're our own prodigals or those of people we know and love, than to pray for them, to lift them up to God's throne of grace. So keep praying. And Dana, I want to take just a quick moment to thank our listeners who gave toward our fiscal year-end goal during the month of May. It was a big goal, but we serve a big God. And I'm so thrilled to report that by His grace and because of the generosity of many, many people, we were able to meet and exceed our goal for the month. So thank you so much for giving to help make this possible. Your support has helped to set us up for our new ministry year, which just started yesterday. Thanks for that update, Nancy. Coming up on the next Revive Our Hearts weekend, we'll hear from Judy Douglas and Jim Simbola, who are going to coach us on how to pray for that prodigal we love. Then, next week and the rest of this month, we'll take a closer look at God's definition of gender and sexuality. Dr. Julie Slattery joins us in the studio on Monday to help us rethink sexuality. Please be back for Revive Our Hearts. Revive Our Hearts with Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth wants you to sense the hope there is for your prodigal to find freedom, fullness, and fruitfulness in Christ.